If you are a Northwestern Wildcat fan, you probably do not really firmly grasp the situation around Florida football. If you're a Utah Utes fan, you probably don't know that there are a lot of people kind of bent out of shape around Florida. But believe me, there are a lot of people bent out of shape around Florida. We live in very, very strange times. We were running through the graphics before the show. Jesse's popping them up there. He's saying, look at this. And so we got Dan Mullen's record over the past few years. And I just want to take you back to August. Before we show you any of that, I want to take you back to August. First off, we were scared and wondering whether we were going to have a season or not. Okay, we got the season. So let's just assume we knew in August we were going to have the season. Do you remember what the talk about Florida was? All the talk amongst Florida fans, myself included, on this show was, is this a make-or-break year for Dan Mullen? And those who answered yes to that question, the follow-up, the context, the backdrop with which that question was being answered is, yes, it's a make-or-break year because this is the year we have to beat Georgia and win the SEC East. So imagine your shock if I told you you're going to beat Georgia, you're going to win the SEC East, and your quarterback, Kyle Trask, is going to be a Heisman finalist, and yet there's going to be every bit as much unrest, and there's going to be every bit as much scrutiny, if not a little bit more, on Dan Mullen entering 2021 as there is right now entering 2020. What planet would you think that that prediction was coming from? As it turns out, right here on Mother Earth. That's what's happening right now. Now, again, if you're a Northwestern fan, Utah fan, you may not realize this is happening. However, very nuanced situation. And once you zoom in and you get closer to Gainesville, I'm going to tell you why there's a little unrest. So, yeah, they certainly beat Georgia last year. Yeah, they won the SEC East. They went and played Alabama as competitive as any team all year played Alabama. They, they, they were within a possession of winning the SEC championship. But... The uh, equity that Dan Mullen should have built, really, with those results, it evaporated. It was a, a net no gain for him because he threw it all away, and they threw it all away against LSU, and then they obviously lost in the SEC title game and then totally no-showed the bowl game against Oklahoma. So nothing really changed there. All that goodwill and all that equity that was built up, I mean, it kind of got evaporated with those three very, very disappointing outcomes consecutively, by the way, at the end of the year. And remember what was on the line in the LSU game. Uh, they had a chance to be a playoff team even if they lost to Alabama. Not after the LSU game, they didn't. And so all that happened, and nothing's really changed in recruiting, like Florida still is who they are in recruiting. Looked like they were about to be kings of the transfer portal, and then Eric Gilbert threw up the deuces. Still got Demarcus Bowman, but it kind of remains to be seen how that's going to pan out long term. And 2020 was just an optics disaster. I don't talk about this a whole lot on the show, but I really think it matters here. There was that ugly scene against Missouri. Maybe some of you have forgotten. So let me walk you down the trail of why things still involve a lot of scrutiny for Dan Mullen. They had that really ugly scene against Missouri where uh, Dan Mullen, you know, I won't go as far as to say he instigated things. He certainly did nothing to quell what was happening at midfield there. And so they had that. And when I say ugly... I want you to put yourself in the position of an athletic director, of a, a high-level donor, of a longtime alum at Florida, and folks who buy those skyboxes. I'm not, I'm not talking about sophomores in college here, okay? When I'm talking about the optics, I'm talking about the lenses through which these sorts of people, and when I say these sorts of people, I mean the ones directly involved with how many zeros are on your paycheck, how they view it. So remember what it looked like against Missouri. Uh, they totally no-showed against LSU. I thought it was probably uh, the single biggest, I don't want to say lapse in judgment. It was just a lapse in Dan Mullen's coaching career. Because what he allowed to do, which you can't have happen ever, uh, but especially with the stakes that high and, and the, the safety net under you completely gone, you can't no-show those games. Or worse, you can't allow your team to show up thinking, all right, well, our helmet's here, so we'll win this thing because we're 24.5-point favorites. It's not the way it works. They had seen Alabama splatter LSU all over Tiger Stadium a couple of weeks earlier, but let yet you remember the pregame there. Nick Saban walks in and says, we think LSU believes they got a shot to beat us tonight, so we're going to have to change the way they think. Like Alabama was a death machine when they came into LSU. Florida showed up for, for like a carnival. That's kind of the mood. That, that was kind of the way they carried themselves, and so LSU gets up on them. Uh, you remember the infamous shoe throw, but man, like that game never – never belonged in the balance. Marco Wilson should have been able to throw that shoe out of the stadium if he wanted to. It should have never decided that game. So then that happens, but it wasn't over yet. You also remember several really weird post-game interactions and comments throughout the season. 
I dressed as Darth Vader, by the way, at one point. I'm not a big Star Wars guy, so that bent me the wrong way. And then you had the situation against Oklahoma. Once you have lost the opportunity to go to the playoff, once you've lost the SEC championship, you go up against Oklahoma, you have massive amounts of opt-outs, and then you tell the assembled media there afterwards, well, you know, this wasn't really Florida who played today. Florida's last game was in the SEC championship, which was really a pathetic thing to say. I don't care if that's the way you felt. That's a pathetic thing to say. And so here was my conclusion for all this. Yeah, I acknowledge all that happened. I think there's a very obvious reason why it happened, and it's this. I don't think Dan Mullen planned on being the Florida head coach in 2021. Whether he ended up getting the attention he thought he would from the NFL or not, I think he thought he was going to get it. And it's the same way, if you are of any age out there, you've probably been a senior in high school at some point in your life. And that last semester, your senior year in high school, you know the disease. It's called senioritis. Pretty much all of us who aren't trying to get into Harvard have had it. Dan Mullen had it last year. Dan Mullen really didn't pay much attention to what the consequences were going to be for the way that he talked or the way he carried himself because he knew two things, or at least he thought he knew two things. One, we're winning on the field. Who cares? I got a quarterback that's about to be a Heisman finalist. We got a shot to win everything we have never won here before under me. And number two, I ain't going to be here next year anyway. Well, they didn't win those things. Kyle Trask didn't win the Heisman and Dan Mullen steer there at 2021. Now, you guys hopefully never had to repeat 12th grade. Well, Dan Mullen, uh, he, he had the senioritis, but yet now he has to come back. And he doesn't come back to a loaded roster either. He comes back with a team full of question marks. Um, there is no contract extension. That's the other really underlying issue. It's kind of simmering down there right now. Again, if you're at Northwestern or Utah and you're, you just acknowledge Florida's existence, but you don't really follow the program, you probably haven't heard about this. But Dan Mullen is a lot closer to the end of his contract than most major head coaches get. I think he's three years away from the end. That sounds like a long time. You know, like in our business, we work on two-year contracts most of the time. Well, in the head coaching industry, it's a little bit different. There are a few more zeros, and there are a few more bits of security added into those contracts. Well, Dan Mullen, he's kind of been vocal in guarded terms, but he's kind of been vocal in the preseason or in the lead-up to spring about how he's not happy with it. Uh, but, you know, that administration also has spoken through action. They haven't extended him. So obviously they want to see more. They're not overly thrilled with the way that last season went. And so we arrive at 2021. You got to, obviously, offensive line's always been an issue for them. You got to completely rebuild your defense and retool, rather, your defense. I don't care if all those guys would have come back. And also, you got Emory Jones at quarterback now. So there are a lot of things to figure out here for Florida. And you have, again, the backdrop of now expectation. And so Dan Mullen had a couple of double-digit win seasons where they didn't accomplish what they wanted him to. Jesse's showing you right now. Think about this. 2018, they go 10-3, and three, they finish 7th. And then 2019, they go 11-2, and two, and they finish 6th. And so what was the talk? The talk was, all right, so we've gotten to a couple of New Year's 6 games. We've won double-digit games. We've won both the New Year's 6 games. What is left to accomplish? Aside from a national title, what we need to accomplish is we need to beat Georgia. We need to win the SEC East. And the true irony in Atlanta's fashion here is that the year where they accomplished both those, it's by far the least attractive looking year on this chart that Jesse's showing you. They go eight and four last year and they finish outside the top 10. Uh, they lose embarrassingly against Oklahoma and the Cotton Bowl. So now where are we? I leave the segment the same way I entered the segment. You tell me. I, I, will, I will be glad to read your submissions, especially Florida fans, in the comment section here. I did the mood tracker a couple of weeks ago. Uh, enough has changed since then that I thought we needed to revisit Florida. Where is Florida and Dan Mullen entering 2021? Your guess is as good as mine.